you and Uncle Petrie don't get started soon, this dog will take off without you. Uncle Petrie, we're ready. Hold your horses, boy. I'm here. Got these out of that old trunk in the attic. Mighty handy for nature study. Gee, they're keen, Uncle Petrie. <laughs> May I carry them? Why, sure can. Hey, now you look like a real explorer. <laughs> You're pretty excited, aren't you, girl? Never knew a dog that loved to romp in the woods like Lassie does. How does she know we're taking her on the hike? Oh, that's easy for Lassie. Every time I take this old knapsack off that hook, it just means one thing to Lassie, a long hike in the woods. Well, you're mighty observing, aren't you, girl? What does observing mean? That she's smart? Yes, I guess you could say that. That's right. Lassie takes notice of little things and remembers them. Remembering little things can be mighty important sometimes. Why don't you change your mind and go with them? You'd enjoy it. No, one hand off the farm's all we can spare. I'll go another time. <laughs> sure you have enough to hold you over? Well, guess we could feed a small army at that. But there's only one thing worse than having too much. It's not having enough. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, dear, they're growing boys. Well, partner, let's go. Thought we'd take the pickup over to the edge of the Black Woods. Wouldn't want the boy all tuckered out before we even get there. We'll be home early now. We will, don't worry. Well, your Uncle Petrie knows a lot about wildlife, so you'll have a good hike. I know. Goodbye, dear. Have a good time. Bye, Mom. In you go. And up you go. Well, certainly one thing we're not going to have to worry about. What's that? We won't have to worry about you two starving. Very funny. Pretty handsome sight, isn't it? You know, Timmy, someday those trees will make some fine furniture. Maybe some houses. Gosh, will they cut down all those trees, Uncle Petrie? All of them? Shucks, no. Spoils the look of the forest. Besides, it's not scientific. What's scientific? Well, it's, uh... Well, it's just being smart. Now, the smart way to log is... Take a few trees from over there and leave some standing. Then you take a few from over there and leave some standing. And so on and so forth. What good will that do? Well, the, the trees that are left standing will they'll drop their seeds and cones, so there'll always be new trees coming right along. I'm glad of that. Some places the Forest Service even plants whole new forests right in among the trees that are left standing. They sort of shelter the young plants. That way, there'll always be a forest to take a hike in. <laughs> well, Lassie's ready and waiting, so let's go. <laughs> ah, nothing like the smell of the woods after a good rain. Yeah, still pretty wet. That rain the other day really soaked in. Mighty pretty, isn't it? It sure is. But I wouldn't like to be in here alone. Of course, I wouldn't be scared if Lassie was with me. Well, now, there's nothing to be scared of, boy. The woods are a real friendly place, if you understand them. Just a lot of pretty scenery and a few friendly animals. You know something, Timmy? Those animals are a heap more scared of you than you are of them. I never thought of that. <laughs> Listen. What is it, Uncle Petrie? Grouse. 
Hear it drumming? <laughs> Shh, Lassie. Come on, maybe we can spot him. Give me the binoculars, boy. Yeah, there he is. Here, take a look. Right through there. Gee. What's he pounding on the log for? He's not pounding anything. Just flapping his wings so fast, he makes that noise, like a vibration. What's he doing that for? <laughs> well, just trying to make some lady grouse think that he's about the most important thing in the whole woods. You mean he's just showing off? That's right, Timmy. Why, sometimes they puff out their chests and do a silly little dance, just to attract attention, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, over by those bushes. Gosh. See how its spots sort of blend into the background? That's nature's way of protecting it, till its legs get strong enough to run, and it can take care of itself. Let's walk quietly, so we won't scare it. Yeah. Walk on your tiptoes, Lassie. Ah, nice and dry. Reckon this'll do. Don't go too far, Lassie. There we are. See, Timmy? The Indians never had telephones or telegraphs or things like that, so they had to figure out some way of talking to each other from long distances, like using smoke signals. Do you know how to talk with smoke signals, Uncle Petrie? Sure do. Fact is, I know quite a few of them. Got a little snack here for Lassie when she's ready. She's just off having fun in her own way. Said it'd be a cinch. So it's taking us another day. Is it my fault? Hey, look. Where'd that dog come from? Search me, but I'm gonna get rid of it. Not so fast with that gun. It's only a dog. Sure, it's a dog. That means it's got an owner. Maybe not far off. One shot out of that gun would bring the law, but quick. I'll chase him away. Go on, get out of here. Go on. Go on, get out of here. This place is getting on my nerves. One more night in this jungle and I've had it. I'll quit your beefing. I'll go into town tomorrow and get the dough and then we'll get out of here. Always remember, Timmy, never leave an untidy camp. What do you know? Hand me those glasses, boy. What is it, Uncle Petrie? Well, if it's what I think it is, it's maples. Sugar maples. Here, take a look. Right across that clearing there. What are they good for, Uncle Petrie? Sugar. Maple sugar. Yes, sir, they sure look like it. Too late now. Well, I'll just have to come back tomorrow and check those trees. What is it, girl? Look, Uncle Petrie. 
Uh-huh. Porcupine quills. All right, steady now, girl. Steady. Well, there we are. You should know better than a tangle with one of those prickly pigs, Lassie. Is your foot all right? No, oh, sure. Little quills like these don't do any harm. You better be more careful, Lassie. Yeah, I guess we better move on. Now, here's the woodcraft test for you, Timmy. Which way's home? I guess I just don't know. You sure don't. If I wasn't with you, how in the world would you ever get home? Oh, that's easy. I'm just saying, Lassie, I'm lost. Take me home. That's good thinking, boy. Real good thinking. Show us the way, girl. Take us home. I'm telling you, that one stand of maples alone will run 15 gallons a season, and I got it all figured out. We can turn a corner of the barn into a sugar house, get the evaporator pan and some sap buckets. Now, wait a minute. How much is this going to cost? Why, we can build a pan ourselves, and buckets don't cost much. We can start in a small way, and as the money comes in, we can get bigger and better equipment. Mmm, maple sugar. I can taste it right now. They're getting fancy prices for raw syrup these days. I checked on it last night. Uncle Petrie, I'm afraid you're building this up for a big letdown. Oh, Paul's right. Maybe you are. Not me. I know sugar maples when I see them, and I know what can be done with them. Well, I'm busy over at the West 40, but if you wait a couple of days, I'll go with you. A couple of days? I can't wait five minutes. I was up for the birds this morning to get my chores done so as I can leave as soon as I finish my dinner. Well, <clears throat> I've finished, and I'm off. It ain't exactly sugar and time, but I just got to get a little sap to run a test. So long. Bye. Bye. And good luck. Oh, my, I wish it wasn't a school day. Timmy would have loved to have gone with him. I wish you could have heard those two at breakfast. The way they were talking, you'd have thought they'd discovered a gold mine. Well, if this thing turns out as well as Uncle Petrie hopes it will, it might be just that, a gold mine. Oh, Paul, do you mm. really think so? Don't get excited. I just mean a little tiny gold mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> doing in here? I, um, I'm, I'm looking at some trees. Looking at trees? For what? Let's see what kind they are. I'm, I'm going to get a little sap. Say, uh, you wouldn't be a little off your rocker, would you? Of course not. I told you, I'm here to inspect some trees. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll be going. You're not going anywhere. Get over here. Sit down. <laughs> Just so you don't get any ideas. Uh, I'd give 50 bucks for a hot cup of coffee right now. So one thing we didn't plan on, firewood that's soaking wet. Ah, I give up. You know, uh, you're going at that fire building all wrong. 
I suppose you can do better with this wet wood. Well, untie my hands. I'll show you if I can. I don't know. Okay. But don't try any funny business. I'll have this real handy. The secret's right there. See? Dry as a bone. Now first, get rid of this wet part. Now I'll make myself some fire sticks. Put my dry wood on top of that. Now we're going to have ourselves a fire. Hey, that's mighty slick. I'll open up some cans. Woods, looking at those trees. Well, if he's in the black woods, he's in trouble. Trouble? Why, what do you mean? I saw some smoke coming up from over there. It was like a signal. It means he's hurt or lost or something. My goodness, what an imagination. But, Mom, yesterday Uncle Petrie told me all the ways that Indians talk with smoke signals. And that's what I saw. Indian smoke signals? Oh, <laughs> what next? But, Mom, I saw him. Why don't you come outside and look? Oh, all right. Just wait till I finish this lettuce. But, Mom, won't you hurry? Yes, I'm coming. Hi, son. How did it go today? Oh, everything was fine at school. But I think something's wrong with Uncle Petrie. Yesterday, Uncle Petrie taught Timmy about Indian smoke signals. Now, Timmy says he saw smoke, and he's afraid that Uncle Petrie may be signaling for help. That's right, Dad. I saw two puffs, and that means trouble. <laughs> Sure enough. I told you. I told you so. Well, that's certainly not a natural way for smoke to rise. What do you suppose it means? I don't know. Well, let me get this straight, Timmy. You say that Uncle Petrie told you that the Indian signal for trouble is two puffs of smoke? Right. That means double for trouble. Well, it might mean something, Paul. We just can't ignore it. Uncle Petrie may have broken his ankle or hurt himself in some way. Well, you're right. We can't take any chances. It's going to be hard to locate where that smoke's coming from. Timmy, do you think you can find your way back to the place where you saw the maples? I don't know. Lassie could. She knows the way out, and she can find a way in. Of course she can. Come on, I'll go over there right away. All right, we'll all go. What do you think you're doing? You're trying to make this fire smoke. Well, I, I was just trying to help. Help who? Trying to let the law know where we are? I don't let you have it.
All right, Lassie. Take us to Uncle Petrie. Understand, girl? Uncle Petrie. <laughs> Girl, is it Uncle Petrie? Oh, if it were Uncle Petrie, she wouldn't have barked. <coughs> I'm going to follow her. You two stay behind, but not too close. That you, Joe? again. Beat it. <laughs> Scram. Go on, get out of here. Go on, get. Hurry, man, hurry. Oh. I gotta help Paul. Well, I guess that one won't bother us again for a while. Oh, boy, am I ever glad to see you. Lassie's got everything under control over there. Yeah, here. You better be on the safe side. I'll watch him. Would you see if there's any rope in the car? My name is Hanson, Robert Hanson, of the Capital City Farmers Bank. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Don't try. Who are these characters? Well, I gave them a part-time job on my farm. I guess maybe this get-rich-quick scheme appealed to them more than an honest job. You've had a pretty rough time of it, Mr. Hanson. You better get to a doctor. Ruth, would you drive him into town and then call the sheriff? Uncle Petrie and I will stay here and guard these playboys. All right. Uncle Petrie? I saw the smoke signals, and remembered everything you told me. Good for you, Timmy. I'm mighty proud of you. Oh, I like the picture in the Calverton News best. I think it sort of flatters me. And not bad, but I look too serious. Is that the one that says, quick thinking on the part of Petrie Martin? No, that's in the uh, Capital City Spectator. This one says, the entire Martin family joined forces and effected the rescue of a prominent capital city citizen and so on and so forth. Here it is. Quick thinking by Petrie Martin and the alertness of a small boy foils kidnap plot. Mom, will you read that one about Lassie again, please? Lassie, their noble dog, subdued and captured the second gunman. Well, I'm mighty proud of each and every one of you, and I have a very smart little boy. I suppose you want to look at your picture again. Oh, Lassie, you'll be spoiled by all this publicity. I knew I forgot something. What's that? I never did find out about those maples. Uncle Petrie, the next time you go into the woods, you better take Lassie with you to keep you out of trouble. Oh, I sure will. How about it, Lassie? 